Today, we're looking at our first impressions after the trade deadline. What do you think? Who were the winners? Who were the losers? How do you think it all shaked out? I mean, I think the early winner, Denver's looked really good, haven't they? Like, they've won 2-0, and and granted, it was the Sixers without Embiid and, and what have you, but Aaron Gordon brings something to them, some verticality. He hasn't even had a huge game yet, but you can see the impact on defense, the potential of it. So, like, if I'm a Nuggets fan, I'm pretty happy. I think that they've probably – They've got to be much happier than, I don't know, the Bulls fans right now who don't have Zach Levine or, or you know, Toronto fans who are, they kept Kyle Lowry and they keep struggling. So I don't, I, I think Denver, man, that is the one move to me that seemed to move the needle. I mean, absolutely. I think Aaron Gordon being able to play with a phenomenal passer in Jokic is going to open up his game and just take a lot of pressure off. But I, I think... It's going to be interesting. I have some concerns that we're going to address later on, but I'm curious to see if uh, how the roles shake out between, especially Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. That's kind of the one question I have there. But I mean, when you were playing with someone as great as Jokic and you have all that talent on the team, it's just going to be like the more the merrier, right? Just pass the ball. I think if yeah, it's going to be interesting to see because they do overlap a little bit. I'm like I'm with you. I'm curious to see how that ultimately works out. There's been no stress test yet. Like they beat the Hawks and what their defense. And then, you know, and then Philadelphia, when they go up against a series of good teams, how does that shake out? But they've got time to work it out. And like I said, it just feels like the, of all the teams that made big moves, it feels like they got better where like I, I didn't see yeah. that with Boston. Wait, I, I have one, though. I think Miami could be really interesting. Yeah. I think if Oladipo can understand his role in Miami, I think that is going to be a very dangerous team because – it's Jimmy Butler as one, right? I think Bam out of bio would be the two. And if Oladipo can be a, a great two or three for them, I think that's going to just take them to the next level because we saw them run out of firepower in the final of last year, right? So if, if Oladipo can accept his role, I'm, I'm very interested to see that Miami team go, you know, take, take a shot at it. But they also got Bielitsa who fills in a real need for them at the four, right? So like, I'm just, I like a lot of things they did. And that's they're in the middle of that very bunched up east. Somebody's got to break out of that, right? Like, yeah, somebody... it's like a Tour de France. It's like it's like a Tour de France cycling stage where like you have everyone in the peloton, and then like you get towards the end and somebody goes for a sprint. That's kind of how I feel like Pat Riley, you know, like all those guys are doing in Miami. They're just like, let's just stay in the middle of the pack, and then when we get close to the playoffs, let's let's yeah. distance ourselves. Every once in a while, right now, it feels like, oh hey, Charlotte's breaking out of the peloton, and then the peloton catches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Charlotte. I feel like, yeah, yeah, that's a great example. Wow, that's a great example. Another team I think, just really briefly, is uh, once again Norman Powell. I'm a huge fan of Norman Powell's game this year. He's been so consistent, and when he, I think, what he adds to that Portland team is Damian Lillard. Every night is putting up crazy numbers. You know, Dame time, uh, and he's one of the most clutch players in the NBA. CJ McCollum is about as old reliable as it gets. Like he is a very smart, disciplined player who consistently produces. But they kind of, in my opinion, needed that third guy who could still score 20 any given night, you know, go for maybe 28 at any given night. Um, and I think that consistent producer for them will be Norm Powell and bring a little more stability and a little more firepower to that Portland team. They also get Yusuf Nurkic back at the center spot. I mean, the biggest problem there is also is all season is the second worst defense in the NBA. Nurkic just improves that by being – you know, one of those guys who knows how to kind of clog the lane and protect the rim and be a big body in there. And just if their defense can just get to average, like you said, I think with the way McCollum's coming on again, playing like he did start closer to the start of the year, draw, you know, Lillard's Lillard, he's an MVP candidate, but I, I'm with you. I think Powell fits. I think that whole team fits together really interestingly. They're another team, by the way, with a really tough schedule. I mean, a lot of teams in the West, the Lakers are backloaded, the Suns are backloaded. Portland's one of those teams really with a backloaded schedule. So they're going to have to do this against good competition.